Hi, um, uh, Rika and Shandi. I am so excited to have you on. Um, I just watched the docu short. Um, I think this time yesterday. Um, it's a fantastic short and a really different kind of short. Um, because normally a docu short just kind of. I, I don't know, it just kind of presents a problem and then leaves you with a question. Um, but Long Line of Ladies um, just documents, which is kind of a fascinating um, experience. It's kind of a, uh, I wouldn't even call it a documentary short. It's almost like a teaching short. Um, so I, I'm super excited for everyone to see this, um, by the way, at South by Southwest. I know you had... Um, you were just at Sundance, I think, um, and I, I believe you premiered there, if I'm not mistaken. So let's let's talk about that for a little bit. What uh, there's been a lot of uh, oh, there's always with Sundance there's always a lot of talk online about hey I watched this hey I watched that. Um, what did you hear the most from Sundance, and what did you learn from that? Yeah, I think uh, we heard a lot from the native community. And so like I'm uh, Dene or Navajo and we just had so much support from the native community. And I think other, like just everybody that we knew, like different artists at the festival, lots of people who were able to see the short that um, wouldn't before because accessibility was a lot more open this year than it was in the past, like really helped get the viewership out there. And so I think everybody was just so excited about it and so touched and um, warmed by the story. And I think that was a really exciting thing for us. Um, at least uh, speaking for myself, I think all of us, like we were just so happy to hear the amount of support and just like people were saying they were crying, they were like just moved. And so it, it always feels good to be a part of something that does that. Yeah. And it's, kind of, I, I know it's the uh, COVID situation is bad, and I shouldn't say this, but I'm almost grateful that Sundance was virtual uh, this year because people got to see a lot more. I think one of the uh, long-held notions I've had, because I've been doing this ever since the pandemic really started, um, back in, gosh, was it 2020? Uh, and I think online access just kind of for festivals like South by Southwest leans to, I, you see a lot more diverse lineup and you see a lot more than you normally would if you're traveling place to place. Um, so I think that's one of the uh, good things <laughs> um, about um, online access. I, I think that's really um, fantastic. Um, and I think it's worth noting that um, I, I don't think you could have found a better place to premiere it because um, Sundance every year is talking about um, every. I think before every everything they talk about in the indigenous peoples and how Sundance is respecting that culture, and I, I think that kind of connects to this short um, in a sense that you're trying to repair some of that culture because. Um, for anyone who, who doesn't know what this is, this is about the, um, apologies if I pronounce it wrong, the Ayhuk, um, it, which is a coming of age ceremony, something that hadn't been done for, I think you say in the short film, 120 years, um, or something like that. Uh, like the last one was during the gold rush, so it's not something that was practiced all that much. And with that, I think with all that time, how important was it to you, I, either one of you can answer this, to capture both the importance and the community aspect of the IHOOC? Rika, do you want to start off? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a process, um, and it's pronounced IHOOC, um, okay. but <laughs> I don't expect you to know that or a lot of people to know that. Um, uh, it was definitely a very um, long and involved process of trying to um, 
Uh, well, between Shandine and I, of course, collaborate and figure out sort of what um, what our roles were in this and how we wanted the film to ultimately shape up. Um, you know, it was a lot of conversations, um, especially like very importantly with Shandine's perspective um, because she's so, you know, um, talented and, and also so involved in um, indigenous film and media, um, just really a desire to not uh, overshare or exotify um, in any way, um, just this idea of ceremony. Um, because, you know, it's very easy to sort of um, romanticize those things or capture them in a way that feels very exotic. And um, it, it was very much a push to figure out ways to capture just enough um, so that, you know, people can understand and care and be invested, but really see the family as a family in a community and not really get too much into the, the weeds of things, not really like getting too detailed or, um, or like the purpose of the film is not to share information with audiences um, because a lot of those, all of those traditions and that information is for the family and for the community to share with one another and pass on to other generations. And it's something they've worked incredibly hard um, generationally to, to achieve and to sort of unearth again. Um, and so it was, it was very much like if this family is willing to sort of bear their hearts and, and be vulnerable and share their traditions um, after, you know, so many years of history being unkind and sort of stealing that tradition away from them, um, how, how then can we capture and share it with audiences in a way that they can understand the love and the beauty of the culture and the tradition without um, necessarily, you know, being exposed to too much. Um, and Shending can talk how I think we achieve that, but it was very much a process of like listening and collaborating with the family and sort of us learning and being educated um, about not only the ihuk, but like just all of it, just the whole kind of the intention behind everything. Yeah, I think, uh, I guess just to add a little bit more, I think like coming into a community in a place like this, like obviously you're so small in the grand scheme of everything that they're doing for their peoples. And I think like to come into indigenous communities is to come into generations of them trying to heal. And um, like, I think Pim puts it well, like the, their specific tribe wasn't um, impacted by colonialism until later than a lot of tribes in America. And so they were able to hold on to a lot of what they hold um, dear to them. And so like the fact that they could take that and move on to a point like where they are now, uh, where Ati is uh, so invested and, and knows and like nurtured by uh, her family uh, in, the, in the same context that she would have been before, uh, before contact or before colonization. And so I think it's really interesting and it's a delicate process. And like, I know a little bit on my side from being Diné, but like, I don't know everything. And so I think there's always ways to go about it that is respectful and, and being vulnerable and listening and just like taking a step back. And I think it's a lot different than an approach that you would take in normal filmmaking. <laughs> I think uh, instead of trying to like gain access to everything, I think you're just really trying to be respectful more than anything. Yeah, and I think that's reflected in the cinematography. I I think I made a note of there's it it just kind of, the camera kind of just stays really far away from the subjects when it doesn't need to be right there. Um, it when you see the girls walking, Ati and um, um, her friends, it it's way back here when you'd expect it to be, you know, maybe handheld and right there. Um, which is kind of interesting. And, you know, um, and when I was talking about perspectives, it's, I, I think it's really special that you captured all, all that you 
both um, captured male, female, and the kids' um, perspective of it um, because they all three have different views on it. The, the men, I, I think it's Ati's father, um, has this wonderful discussion about, oh, hey, my daughter tells me everything, and why aren't normal people talking about these things? And the mom's just like, I'm just so happy that these new generations uh, are talking about these things that were once lost, um, that they're reviving the culture. And I think that's just, I think with documentaries providing all, all angles is really important to understanding the topic at hand. Um, and, you know, talking about that resurgence, um, I think we've seen, I, I don't know if it's a reclamation or what you would call it, but there's been a resurgence of indigenous voices um, lately. Um, I, I could name several uh, things, but my mind is blanking. Um, but th there seems to be a, a rise of this. And what is your hope amongst this resurgence of these indigenous voices that it's not being stereotyped anymore? Yeah, um, I guess I'll speak a little bit on that. I think it's just to create a narrative that's always been known by indigenous people. I think so often we're reflected poorly in media. And I, I know that growing up and seeing like what I would hope to see on screens and see that reflection of me, but oftentimes being disappointed and realizing like, like Pocahontas isn't a reflection of me, like th these stories that are so out there and wild and romanticized uh, are, are not like who I am. And so I think there is a resurgence and there is reclamation in trying to find indigenous stories where people uh, of all different walks of life can can hopefully understand like what it means to be indigenous. And I think like this uh, doc is like an attempt at that. And I think it, it does a pretty good job in that like it's it doesn't only, um, I guess, like reflect and like in, in, I guess, try to get the audience to delve into the emotions of what it's like, but it also like protects. And I think that's a huge aspect of indigeneity that is always lost and um, and is tried to. Um, I guess, like exploit. And so I think there's ways in which indigenous media just has huge leaps uh, and and there it's going to be like great to see stuff like this all the time. Sorry, I'm like going in circles, but yeah, no, I think we, we owe it a lot to like our creative team and like Sam Davis, our cinematographer, like really took all of our thoughts and um, really heard us out and was letting uh, us explore like while we were shooting and it was like so uh, it was just a great team to work with I think we were always bouncing ideas off of each other and I think um, that was really helpful for me yeah and um, so it, it, it's interesting we, we were trying we're seeing um, a lot a, not resurgence. Why, why am I stuck on that word? Um, but there's a lot of um, co-directing teams now on documentaries. So can you talk, uh, either one of you, um, about the collaborative process on this short? Um, how did you kind of bounce ideas off each other, like you said, and really mold, mold the short into what it needed to be? start on that one um well it was sort of it all I mean we were making a film in the midst of a pandemic so I think and and Shandine's in Albuquerque and I'm in Los Angeles um and the family's in Northern California so it's like we're all kind of a flight away from one another so um it was a lot of communicating via zoom beforehand Shandine and I didn't know each other um before this project and um it was really important to try to get to know one another, at least like be vulnerable with one another and try to um, get a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little less superficial before we would show up um, on the day and start filming together. Um, so it was a lot of really long Zoom calls, <laughs> maybe overwhelmingly long, a lot of sort of bearing our hearts and trying to understand each other. And also me just trying to understand like, 
her perspective on everything because um, it just is so integral to like the process, you know, before we started really making any creative decisions, sort of tr like trying to understand and speak the same language, um, you know, and get to know each other in that way. Um, so, and it wasn't always easy, definitely. <laughs> I think we're both very strong headed and we both definitely had our disagreements um, sometimes, but um, I think at the end of the day, like it really came down to our hearts being in the same place and kind of wanting the same things for the film and for the family ultimately. Um, and, and just like also collaborating with Pim Allen, um, who's Ati's mother and a producer on the film and just figuring out like, what are the best ways to kind of creatively move forward at every juncture? Um, and I know Shandy can, will probably have some things to add there. Yeah, it was great. I think like I've never worked with somebody in that sense before, like co-directing. And so I think that in itself is a challenge, but I think we really both rose up to the occasion and um, we're always fighting for the film and like trying to figure out like what is it that we want this film to represent for the family as well. Um, and I think like when our conversations were geared towards that, I think it made it so much easier and so much like our, our pouring our hearts out and our vulnerability uh, was a lot, um, I guess, just like more heard from each other when it was put in that context. And so um, we, we always were talking about that or like, if anything, it was just like, even on set, like it was um, like, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Like, I think code or directing, you're always trying to be in the place. You're always trying to do everything. You're trying to meet all these needs. And so to co-direct was like, oh, I can step off and go do something else and maybe talk to somebody while Rika is like, I guess like honing down on this conversation that we're filming and so like we would split up sometimes or we would constantly be in each other's ears or like right next to each other watching the monitor um and it was always like really exciting I think it like that type of relationship takes something special and I think we definitely got it there yeah for sure it, you, you uh all right. Um, I, sorry. Um, but you can definitely feel that collaborative process. I feel like um, there's two parts to the film where it's, Shandi, you're talking with your voice when you're talking about the eye hook. Um, and sorry, I keep bumping the table. It's, it's a short table. Um, but, um, and then, um, Rika, I think you're talk. You um, speak with your voice, or um, about okay. Here's my perspective of just being totally, on, just observing um, what's going on, and it, it, it's a really beautiful short that I think people check out at South by Southwest. Um, because I think it, it, it's just a unique kind of short that we don't get anymore. Sometimes we get high concept shorts, like um, I think when I saw it Sundance 2021 was Van Buren's gift shop. Um, that was very high concept. Um, but this is, I, I feel like you could put this in a classroom and like kind of just, okay, here's, here's a perspective that you may not be thinking about um, in your day to day. And I, I think it is important as a, a non-Indigenous person um, that we kind of listen um, because that's, um, it's not ours. Um, and I think the more voices we have out there talking about uh, issues that aren't, aren't, um, that we can fit, not fix, but just listen to, um, I think the better off we'll be as a society. Um, because I think that's what happens nowadays is we don't listen and that causes huge problems. Um, but yeah, I just, 
I just think this is a, an exceptional short that everyone should check out at South by Southwest. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just, um, I think it's screening online. Um, I, I'll, I'll put the description, uh, the times uh, down below for those who can make it in person. But Rika, uh, Shandi, I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, wherever you get, where you're, I think you said uh, New Mexico and California, um, respectively. Um, I just want to thank you for this, um, for your time, really, because I mean, what is it like? It's, it's, it's early there, um, ish, um, and I, I know I don't like do, jumping on anything earlier than like lunchtime, so. Um, I just thank you so much. I hope people check it out. Um, but, um, for those, um, listening, watching, whatever, um, you can check out my review of Long Line of Ladies probably as soon as this goes up. Um, I'll have it, uh, up on, uh, uh, on premiere day. Um, as well as you can watch this while you wait. Um, but yeah, I'll have, Tons of South by Southwest 2022 coverage. I've been talking to a bunch of people. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Um, but Rika, Shandi, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all of your thoughtful questions. We really had a good time. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>